Hi, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mateo Chavez Lewis, and welcome to the channel. <laughs> As you can see, I am in my new studio, and things are not quite set up yet. Um, but as I'm setting things up, I kind of wanted to take you through what the setup for my studio looks like and what kind of equipment I use in case you have a studio that you are trying to set up yourself and you are interested in parsing out which pieces of equipment to use. So kind of the centerpiece of my whole setup is my computer. And this is a iMac, like just a, a pretty basic one. Um, these will set you back, you know, a few thousand dollars, but Something, uh, I was very lucky I got it as a, a birthday gift from my parents, so I didn't have to worry about it. But I, I did get myself a MacBook Air this year so that I could do all the work that I do on my Mac, kind of on the go. And uh, that was only about $1,300 and they had a monthly payment option as well, so it's just over $100 a month. And with the money that I've been making from gigs, you know, that's kind of no big deal. And the MacBook is fantastic it does kind of everything I need it to do so if you don't uh, have the budget for a, a big fancy computer uh, MacBook Air is a great way to go I also have this little stand for my MacBook which is when I'm when I'm working on a table or, or a desk or anything it stands up and it it's kind of hard to unfold but once you unfold it it sits on the desk like this and then I set my MacBook on top of it so that I'm not hunched over when I'm working what else is here? A three hole punch, super necessary for hole punching sheet music. Now moving on to my keyboard here. So this is a Korg SP250, which is kind of an outdated model, but I got it like 10 years ago. Like I learned how to play piano on this keyboard. Um, and it's still with me and it's still in perfect working condition. So it's really durable and it's totally worth the investment. It was only like a thousand dollars. There's also at a lower budget, the Casio CDP S350 which uh, you can get that at Best Buy for, I think it's like five or $600. So not too expensive. The keyboard doesn't need to set you back either. Of course, there are these big fancy keyboards with a bunch of sounds and synth options that will be a couple thousand dollars, but a nice, as long as it's 88 keys, which is the full length of the keyboard, so it's not uh, one of these smaller truncated keyboards. And as long as the keys are weighted so that you can play it like a real piano, you know, like an upright or a grand piano with real strings. Um, the keys have kind of the same resistance to them. There are, are keyboards where the, the keys kind of bounce because uh, they're just these little flimsy plastic things and they're built kind of more like synthesizers. So you don't, you don't want one of those if you're gonna be playing piano. But if you're just inputting, you know, MIDI data into your computer, then it kind of does work to have the lighter plastic kind because it makes it more portable and it's cheaper. Segue two. This is the Acorn Master Key 49. It's uh, kind of, as you can see, it's a lot smaller than a real piano. It's super light, I can kind of throw it around. And the keys, you, you can notice the difference. They don't have the weights underneath them. So when you press them, they kind of bounce like that. So obviously I don't want to be playing, you know, piano concertos on this tiny dinky little thing. But it has a plug that it plugs into either my uh, iMac or my MacBook and it transmits MIDI data, which allows me to record what I play on this on Logic, if I'm recording like instrumental tracks, or Sibelius as well, I can kind of input what notes I want to make on the sheet music so I don't have to input each note individually, I can just kind of play the chords and play the notes on the piano and it transfers directly to my computer, which makes inputting sheet music totally a walk in the park. So this is great for like portable, it fits in a suitcase, you know, when I go to Halifax or when I go to New York, I always bring this with me so that I can do my work from there. And also that means that if you, if you are only gonna be inputting music like into Logic, for example, like if you are gonna be making beats but you're not a piano player necessarily, um, then you don't need to invest in one of these thousand dollar fancy 88 key weighted keyboards. You can just get a any portable USB MIDI keyboard like that with the non-weighted keys, um, the Acorn Master Key 49 was a hundred bucks. Uh, super easy to get at Long and McQuaid and uh, really, really durable and useful. And it will give you basically all the functionality you need if you're just gonna be inputting sheet music or recording MIDI onto Logic. So, oh, also I should say, for those of you who don't know, MIDI is, uh, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, I'm pretty sure is what MIDI stands for. 
Uh, someone fact check me on that in the comments. But it's basically a way of inputting musical information to the computer in a way that isn't a sound wave so that you can edit it directly. So when I play a note on my piano, instead of recording the sound wave as a, as a sound file, the MIDI records what note I played, how hard I played it, and how long I held it for. So that way I can change the instrument. So it can just take that same information of how long I played the note, how hard I hit it, and transfer it to a trumpet and have a trumpet play that note for that long at that velocity. Um, and so MIDI is super helpful for if I'm making orchestral tracks. Um, I can play the trumpet on my piano. I can play the bass on my piano. I can play the drums on my piano because of MIDI. And the other thing that MIDI does is because it is recording what note I'm playing on the piano, and it's not just an arbitrary sound wave file, but it's actually digital musical information, it makes it so that I can input you know, music directly to Sibelius, and the sheet music is automatically written when I play the piano. So that's what MIDI is. Um, the last kind of centerpiece in my little setup here is uh, my microphone and my soundboard equipment, which these are also super, super budget. So here, this, the microphone is the Rode NT1A. Uh, it was like a hundred bucks, maybe, maybe 200. I don't think it was even that much. Great mic, great quality, uh, nice sound for the vocals. And then I have that plugged into this, my soundboard here, the Steinberg CI1 soundboard. Uh, also, barely over $100, super, super easy to plug in and set up. And that allows me to connect this cable to here and then plug this into my computer via USB. So that's how my microphone gets connected to my computer. So that's the gear that I'm using right now. I mean, it's all very kind of budget, but uh, if you want to help me upgrade this gear uh, so that it's a little bit more professional, you can donate to my Patreon channel at the link in the description, or you can come support my live show of quarantine songs, which tickets are now on sale. For, it's, a, it's a song series that I wrote. I premiered it kind of in video form on this channel, and now it's gonna have its live on stage premiere uh, at the beginning of June. So you can get tickets for that at the link in the description as well. Also next week, Thursday, May 12th, I'm doing an online, free online class, which is an introduction to Broadway music. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the very basics of music theory and how they're used to tell stories in musicals. And that's over at the Broadway Maven, which is a great site for learning about Broadway appreciation. So you can either come to see that live uh, at the link in the description, or a recording of my class will hopefully be posted on this channel next week. And uh, that's all I've got for you uh, today, unfortunately. The, the move has been very stressful and time consuming. And I'm also, you know, playing gigs pretty much every night for the next few weeks. So I'm also gonna take next week off the channel I'm, I don't have, I just don't have time. I wish I did, uh, but I, I'm not gonna be able to put up a new video until two weeks from now. Uh, but then we'll get back to a regularly scheduled content of analyses and song videos and the, the kind of videos I really like putting out onto this channel. Um, so if you've watched, if you stuck around for this whole video, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in two weeks time. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Once again, my name is Mateo Chavez-Lewis and I will see you in the next video. Peace out, y'all.